मॉर्निंग एवरीवन सो हाउ आर यू ऑल फाइन सो ऑल ऑफ यू इनटू प्रीलिम्स मोड और स्टिल मेंस ऑप्शनल एथिक्स ऐसे टोटल इनटू प्रीलिम्स गुड वंडरफुल सो ऑल ऑफ यू एट ब्रेकफास्ट सो नाउ आई विल सर्व डिफरेंट काइंड ऑफ ब्रेकफास्ट फॉर यू राइट so there is going to be a little bit analysis of uh, last uh, few years prelims papers and then uh, before that i will talk about uh, briefly about notification so how many of you have already applied for 23 prelims how many of you are yet to apply very good so all of you need some clarity i think right especially with respect to place of uh, mains examination so i am going to tell something about uh, mains examination center right so based on my experience and based on uh, some insights about what can work in your favor what may not work in your favor and uh, the importance of main center in this regard <coughs> so we'll wait for uh, five more minutes so suddenly the weather has changed in bangalore hmm? so we are all sweating hmm? so blame everything on climate change hmm? so how many of you completely read the notification did you go through the notification completely okay are you very happy that the posts are increased hmm? 1105 everybody wants ias but still happy that you know <laughs> there are uh, 1000 1105 posts and ias will remain 180 and within 180 around 75 for general category you need to be within 75 rank 75 if you want ias right so doesn't matter how many posts actually so if you want to be in ias in case you are in general category or obc or whatever so you need to aim for the higher score in mains so in bangalore like people are on time 11 o'clock means 11:05 on time <laughs> in delhi 11 11 means 11:30 so nowadays because of youtube you know people doesn't want to walk under 200 meters hmm? it's going to be live streamed some of you like oh shit like so <laughs> i didn't know that you know it is going to be on live fine so uh, number of vacancies are 1105 and the uh, number of applicants are going to be 1 million right 10 lakh people or 11 lakh people and uh, because of the nature of the competition uh, 55% of them will drop out they apply with all the josh you know uh, for many of them it is free also so they apply and apply, applying for the upsc examination is not counted as an attempt right so that is also one other incentive for people to apply so anyway they will apply let, let me decide you know on the night of 27th may so if my mind is still sane and you know proper i'll go and attempt but some people are worried now only whether to attempt or not they will apply but still they are confused whether to write or not preliminary examination so but doesn't matter the competition is between 5 to 6000 people as i keep saying for 5 to 6 years the overall competition for upsc the overall competition for these so called coveted posts of 1105 are to be honest like 380 posts 200 plus 180 200 ips 180 ias and uh, 35 40 40 foreign service for these uh, the real competition is between 5 to 6000 aspirants throughout the country right 
So other people are preparing for the examination, but I don't consider them as serious enough or uh, maybe in the right direction or uh, maybe taking right guidance or uh, maybe preparing with the intensity that, take the, uh, that the examination demands. Right. So around 4 to 5 lakh people will write the preliminary examination. So as you know around 10 to 12,000 depending on the posts. So 1,100 means around 13,000 plus will be selected for mains examination. Now there are number of prelim centers are 79 throughout the country. So for uh, forest service there are again 150 vacancies right. If you are serious about uh, there are people you know who have uh, one or two attempts left. So it is a wise decision to skip civil services apply only for forest services this year. If you are in that category where you have already spent 3, 4 attempts and uh, if you are eligible to write forest service examination. So my suggestion is that apply only for forest service examination, spend entire year preparing for forest services. right? So you can choose two optional based on how the, the trend, present trend and uh, totally focus. So the probability of getting selected in forest services is increasing if you devote entire year only for forest service provided you are eligible. You know, the eligibility is BSc or you know, BSc with you know, animal husbandry, agriculture, chemistry, botany, zoology, physics, mathematics, chemistry or any engineering graduate. Right. So you are eligible so you can consider this option. Right. And uh, those who are in the doubt like the freshers whether to give this attempt or not you can only apply for the forest services this attempt. If you want to have an experience of preliminary examination. So your civil services attempt will not be counted. The forest services account will be uh, attempt will be counted. So that you can have the experience of prelims as well. Whereas you can be still a fresher for civil services when you give in the 24. So the number of centers remain same. Now the 21st February is the last date for applying for this examination. Now this year what they have made last year till last year you could have applied you could be able to apply n number of times. The latest application was going to be considered right if you had made any errors. So people make errors with respect to uploading of photo certain date of birth graduation details some details will be there will be certain errors. So if you have already applied and made certain errors there is a window period between 22nd February to 28th February where you can edit any part of the application. So you do not have to be scared afraid that you have made mistakes in application. So there is a window period of 7 days where you can edit any part of the application. So now while applying the most important uh, aspect the, the element here in the application is the mains center. right? So remaining details prelims you can choose you know in, if you are in Karnataka, Mysore, Bangalore, Darwad you can choose uh, based on where you live. But uh, when it comes to mains right those who have already applied. So how many of you put Bangalore as your center outside Bangalore which center Madras, Madras. you are from Tamil Nadu yes. okay. what about Delhi who said Delhi okay. So what about others who are going to apply which center you would like to choose for mains hmm? Bangalore so all of you hmm? okay. why Bangalore hmm? weather <laughs> I knew someone was going to say weather so that is why I said in the beginning see how, how hot it is getting right now still it is better than Delhi weather. So of course uh, it is a stupid question to ask why Bangalore because you people are staying in Bangalore. <laughs> so the center is going to be near to your rooms, homes, right, PGs. So obviously we will choose Bangalore as your center. So now uh, so what is happening is that uh, next to Delhi in, the, in the India when it comes to civil services examination Bangalore has emerged as the most competitive center. Right, most competitive center when it comes to civil services examination in mains. 
What do I mean by competitive center? Right. The number of serious aspirants who are preparing for the examination next to Delhi, it is the highest in Bangalore, thanks to you know. Right. <laughs> right. So, thanks to insights. Yeah, of course, that, so that is the obvious answer, right? So, we made Bangalore as the hub of the civil services examination. So, the most serious aspirants in the south, some, some from the north, right? So, they are coming to Bangalore and uh, they are preparing for the civil services examination. And after prelims, so we attract many people for mains test series also, the core batch. So, now what is happening? There is a data to indicate that the number of people who are clearing mains examination, the highest number is in Delhi, second highest is in Bangalore, right. So, again second, when we say second highest, the numbers are still small compared to Delhi, it is very small, right. So, there are 24 centers for civil services examination, 24 cities throughout India, right. For forest service, there are 10 cities. So, number of students who wrote mains in 22 were 13,000, 13,090, 13,090. So, there is, there are I think one or two centers in Bangalore, the average number is 600 to 700 students who write mains in Bangalore, right, 600 to 700 students. So, total number of students selected for interview were 2529, right. So, the ones who are giving interview this year. So, 2500 students. So, out of 13,090 students. So, this is the graph based on uh, my sample size. So, uh, so I do one on one mock interviews with students who are selected for UPSC interview. So, there are 700 plus students who have registered with me to take one on one mock interviews. Among them around 350 I have completed so far. So, till yesterday I mean uh, yesterday I created this database, 434 DAFs we collected the mains centers details, right. So, who, are, who, had, who wrote mains from which center. So, 179 out of 434 got selected from Delhi centers, right. 32 from Bangalore, 27 Hyderabad, 24 Bhopal, 24 Jaipur, 21 Mumbai, Mumbai is surprising actually, Chennai 18. So, Mumbai because many people went to Mumbai to write, you know, from different parts of the country. And uh, Tiruvananthapuram 15, Lucknow 14, again this is not uh, the clear indicator because the number of Bangalore is high here in the in these DAFs because I am from Karnataka, students from Karnataka would have desired to take one on one mocks with me, right. So, they have given more number of DAFs, I mean more number might have registered. So, that could be also the reason that we have more Bangalore samples here. But Delhi is because of purely all India numbers. Now, if you can extrapolate it, right. So, 179 uh, multiply by 5, let us say 180 multiply by 5. So, multiply 5 be because 2500 interview candidates are there, right. So, multiply by 5 to 6, how much it comes? Hmm? 900 something. So, in Delhi around, you know, as far as there is no exact data. Uh, I am not aware of how many people write mains from Delhi. So, it is said there are like around 8 to 10 centers, right. So, there may be around you know 2500 students writing mains from Delhi centers, right. So, you calculate percentage, I did a rough estimation. So, it is it comes around 40 percent, right. So, 40 percent of people writing in Delhi, right. If the number goes slightly higher, if it is say 3000 or let us say it is 4000, even it is still around 30 to 40 percent, right. So, whereas it is in Bangalore, it is around 20 percent, the number of people, right, as a percentage of those who are writing, cracking this examination from Bangalore center. 
So, and other centers may be see it is not totally accurate what I am saying it is just indicative. So, I wanted to just confirm my bias my conspiracy theory that writing in Bangalore is slightly detrimental for a very serious candidate not for everyone. So, whom I consider serious candidate is somebody who has written let us say 30 40 essays or so many essay tests and has scoring has been scoring around 60 to 70 marks in our test series in essay paper right. Somebody who is scoring 90 to 110 in mains test papers. So, like that there are hundreds of people who are scoring in that range as part of IPM as part of core batch as part of YLM and mains I will test series right and majority of them are going to choose Bangalore as the center those who are you know preparing at inside size or maybe one or two other institutions in Del in Bangalore. So, mostly they are going to choose Bangalore right. So, now let, let us assume this is the examination hall. So, in this examination hall so some hundred students who are who were part of various programs who have written multiple mains test have been scoring really well. Let us say they all come into this room and start writing the mains examination right 100 people you know you know all of them are family it happens actually. So, when you go to write to mains examination so we will see so many familiar faces in Bangalore centers right. So, now the next question so all of you have written the essay test now. So, now the eval the examiner has collected all the essay copies right 100 copies it is a bundle. So, now where does it go? Hmm? It will go to evaluation to Delhi UPSA building or I do not know where or some secret you know, underground place somewhere right very secure place ah, it is a very secure place I we do not know where it is right. So, it goes to that place now UPSC in its website at has given that these papers will be shuffled to ensure that there is a parity between different centers. So, now here is my dilemma or my you know question how are they going to be shuffled are they going to be shuffled like the way we shuffle the cards right like 100 copies you mix everything and then. So, is it possible is it possible to do like that. So, what could be the most probable way of shuffling these copies hmm? may be like bundle of 10 20 copies or maybe 50 copies right rather than one copy I am I am not sure. Now, assuming that it is a bundle of 10 copies or 20 copies or 50 copies or they say they are going to shuffle and still you know may be there is minor shuffling also let us not doubt UPSC right let us not be skeptical I really have huge respect for UPSC. So, so let us believe that they are going to be shuffled. Now, what happens? So, I am the evaluator right. So, then for me a bundle of let us say 20, 20 copies from Bangalore comes to me for evaluation, another 20 copies from Bhopal center comes to evaluation and another 10, 20 copies from Lucknow or center right. So, now these three center copies are mixed. So, now while evaluating if I sense that out of 20 copies if 10 or 12 essays have kind of similar examples similar approach of writing right or similar quality overall right in terms of the essay parameters which we have you know originality analytical thinking critical thinking different dimensions whatever we talk about. So, now what will happen Hmm? Hmm. So, there are many probabilities now you might assume that this is the level of quality that everyone is writing. So, let me see if somebody can write better than this. So, award low marks lower than these copies actually deserve right. So, another probability these copies can get very good marks and the subsequent copies can get very low marks because these have set some kind of standard right. So, now based on that I started telling some people you know. So, those who really trust in me believe me that you know whatever I say can be 
just digested without doubting like some people. So, I tell them go to go to Raipur and write, go to Shillong and write, go to Delhi and write. So, 90 percent of the cases who have believed in me and gone out have cleared the mains. And many of them have got ranks so far, right. Some of them who I, I told go out, but still remained in Bangalore, some of them are, they also have cleared, right. But what I believe the same person if he had gone to another center and had written, their marks would have been slightly better than here, right. So, I think it is relative to competition that evaluation takes place. So, there is scaling and everything, but still I believe there is some amount of truth in what I am saying, right. Let us assume that there is no truth at all in whatever I am saying, right. So, it is all nonsense, it is all in your language bullshit, whatever it is, right. So, let us say there is no truth. So, I believe still you can take a chance, right, go out of Bangalore and write the examination, there is no harm in it. So, if so, if there is no truth in what I am saying here, of course, writing in another center will not harm you, right, because it is going to be same, it is a level playing field, right, am I right, right. So, if you are someone who has written previously mains in Bangalore and after that have really prepared well again for this year mains, my suggestion do not write in Bangalore, right. And if you are a fresher who are really well prepared, written multiple uh, tests of mains, multiple essays, it is ok, go to Delhi, right. Go to Delhi or you know Bhopal or Mumbai and give your mains examination. So, the only rider here is that you have to take care of your health and food, that is it, right. If you can adjust to that weather in that city, to that food in that city for 15 days. So, I think uh, a change also is good in some cases I think. So, you can take this chance confidently because it actually pays off, right. The only condition is that you would have really practiced hard for the mains examination. Now, thinking that you know I have not written mains, let me go to Shillong and you know see, eh? see any luck, hmm? right. So, you will be disappointed, right. So, you won't see now the Bangalore and Delhi have emerged as hub, next is the Hyderabad, right. So, the thing is. Uh, so, in other lesser known cities or uh, cities where uh, these hubs do not exist, right. So, the quality of answer writing may not be as good as it is in Delhi and it is in Bangalore. Now, if somebody is writing really good here and if you go to that center and write, so there is some probability that you have slight advantage. So, there is a saying in Kannada, right, right. So, you are the king in Haluru. So, Haluru means. <laughs> so, you are the king in a completely destroyed village, huh? <laughs> something like that. You know, you are king where you know everyone is stupid, something like that. So, there is also, so one the I mean, so where everyone is blind in a village, the one with one eye is the king, something like this, right. So, the thing is, uh, uh, I am not very sure about my own theory, but I was trying to see. Then I saw some element of truth based on the data also here, right. But it has worked in past with so many candidates, even this year also those who went to Delhi have actually cleared, right, from Karnataka, many of them who went to Delhi have actually cleared means they are again giving interview. Those who expected to clear, those who are really doing well in main test series, those who wrote in Bangalore, some of them have actually not cleared mains. So, if you have been part of our reading rooms, you will know these stories. These candidates would deserve to clear actually, many of them, but so they did not go out of comfort zone. So, I believe that could be one of the factors in addition to other reasons that like you know they might not have updated their notes or might not have practiced enough, right. So, consider this, uh, anyway you have taken a risk to prepare for the examination, right. 
and uh, this small risk of consider it as a you know tour. Hmm? So, 15 days vacation, so where you go to a nice place and you know you write the examinations and come back right. So, if you go to northeast you can have a tour of hmm, the northeastern region, region Bhutan, some people went to Bhutan and came last year right. So, if you are in Delhi you can go to Labasna, hmm, Uttarakhand, Himachal you know see some cities and come back right. So, this is what I wanted to convey mainly in this session that is one part right. So, I will see all the 700 dApps going forward. So, whatever 700 dApps I will again collect all the data I will see if I will try to see if the Delhi numbers go on increasing. And what could be the reason that you know you might be asking Delhi also has strong competition there are multiple centers and in Delhi there are multiple coaching institutions right. So, different coaching institutions are different way of guiding students there is a diversity right. So, the diversity is one, re one reason that success rate is high in Delhi you cannot like generalize you know it is not homogenized right. So, but in Bangalore this homogenization is very much a probability right. So, that is why I invite all big coaching institutions to come to Bangalore set up your centers here right do not poach our faculties that is. <laughs> so, even if they want to poach our faculties would not go. Okay. Now, the evolution of preliminary examination. So, preliminary 22 how many of you gave 22 preliminary examination. So, obviously, you have all failed huh? <laughs> right. It is a cruel joke right. <laughs> No, I mean you would not be sitting here if you had written mains right. So, if you had written mains you would be you would not be sitting here like you consider yourself smart I have cleared prelims 22. So, 23 I know how to clear right. So, now what I have observed is that uh, since 2018 19 especially the preliminary trend is changing it is becoming more analytical in nature the questions are becoming more deeper right in terms of testing your concepts right the clarity which you have about the issues every topic in the syllabus. So, in that nature the examination is changing. So, if you see this table, so this is the 22 prelims question paper. So, this table is about uh, the nature the, the format of the questions right. So, here the single option question means the question with direct A B C D options not like statement based question and then right you know those questions direct a b c d questions. So, here there was one polity question economy t 2 questions environment 9 questions like that, but overall 28 questions total number of 28 questions with direct options right without statements. So, then 2 statement based questions you know those classic questions 1 only 2 only both right. So, 12 such questions and mostly in polity and economy right and then 3 statement based questions 35 right and then 4 statement based questions 11, 5 statement based questions 4 and there was one, one 6 statement based question and one 7 statement based question. So, there was one question with 7 statements right. So, so this is the the nature of the question in terms of the length of the questions. So, 70 percent of the questions were statement based questions right out of 100 72 questions were statement based questions. Now, what about uh, 21 paper? So, 41 questions were direct questions right like A B C D the number of statement questions were 59 right. Now, increase in the number of statement based questions right indicates the analytical nature of the paper right. So, what the statement based questions do is they put you in a tricky situation. So, this classic 50 50 problem when it comes to elimination. So, you know either of 
one statement absolutely correct, one you don't have any clue about it. So, out of two to three you have, you know about again one statement or two statement. So, you do not have clarity about other statements. The basically it indicates the depth of understanding of the issue, right. So, the more deeper understanding you have about an issue, the more statement based questions you can get right. So, now still the focus in preliminary examination when it comes to preparation is that everybody wants to increase the breadth, you know you want to touch as many topics as possible, you want to prepare every topic that is there in the syllabus without trying to gain depth in some of the key areas, key themes in the syllabus that are there in the syllabus. So, that is one fundamental mistake many of the aspirants are committing. Right. So, what it means is that there is no multiple revision of same source within that same topics right? and there is no curiosity to learn more about certain important topics. Right. So, you have to dig little deeper on important topics right? and learn more about them if you want to really score well in preliminary examination. So, instead of endlessly reading material after material, one material you complete, another polity you take, another polity module, another value added material. So, do not go on material after material, instead the wise decision stick to one standard resource, right? dig it deeper, do it multiple times. So, avoid that psychological trap where you know the market is flooded with n number of material, you, you are always in this insecure mindset to by them keep reading more and more. So, avoid that. So, when it comes to polity the NCRT books, the Indian constitution at work, Lakshmi Kant and any notes you have made or any class notes of any institution are sufficient. Right. Similarly, for most of the topics like that. So, this clearly indicates that 23 prelims is going to be not exactly similar. I believe the these questions could be somewhat you know uh, instead of 28 it, it can be more or less around 28 uh, 25 to 20 30 the direct. So, most of these questions are factual in nature right. See these direct A B C D wala questions are most of them are factual some of them are conceptual, but th their reducing number indicate that the exam is not purely factual and then there are pair based questions are also there. So, 8 of them you know only one pair is correct only two pair is correct. So, instead of one and two are correct not like that. So, you have to precisely know all the three options to, to get that right. right. So, which means you cannot ignore certain facts also you should actually remember them. right. So, for this year examination this trend will continue and why this trend is continuing. So, why these papers are getting more analytical in nature, the questions are kind of getting deeper. Hmm? And similarly, we are witnessing same in CSAT also, right. So, I literally like I have seen so many people you know the brilliant minds from IITs, hmm? IIMs, top medical colleges failing in CSAT paper not because of lack of their aptitude, but mainly because of taking it for granted that my aptitude is good you know I am first ranking CLAT examination. So, I will go. So, the paper was not that tough even for them it is just that the time management they were not able to solve more number of questions in the because the questions were either lengthy some passages are vague than the expected. So, the practice is the best bet when it comes to CSAT. I am 100 percent sure those who are sitting in the classroom have not solved more than 10 CSAT papers even till now. Nobody in this classroom has solved more than 10 CSAT full length papers so far, right. Am I right? Is there any one or two person who has solved like more than 10 CSAT papers? Hmm? Good. They have been visiting me regularly, so hmm? good. Like two people here. So, keep taking it for granted CSAT papers. So, remember this line from this session CSAT is going to be 
more tougher than the last year, this year, right? It is going to get more tougher actually. So maybe the quant problems can get, get tougher, the passages can become more subjective, more analytical, more vague. But some way it is intend, intended to eliminate those candidates, those who are, those who are ignoring the aptitude part of the examination. And they want problem solvers in the administration. They want people with sharp skills in the administration nowadays. They want people who can take quick decisions, those who can take risks in the administration, right. So, preliminary is also one of the way of testing this mindset. It is no more just a screening test, right. They do not want to just screen people based on factual knowledge and select people for mains. So, that era is gone now. So, you have to all of you have the chance you know it is I am not scaring you, it is just that you people are not practicing. So, what I have co come to conclusion is that you should give equal import importance to CSAT as you are giving equal importance to GS paper. So, you solve 60, 70 marks for GS, but then again for CSAT hardly like 5, 10 mock tests that too like you know with half hearted like you are not you do not want to do it. Some, some may be because of fear, some may be because of this you know assumption that you are already good in aptitude. You may be good, you may not be good, but do not ignore CSAT paper at any cost. And this paper also you have to read things with bit of curiosity, right. NCRTs at any cost do not ignore, right. NCRTs have both factual and analytical content in equal measure, their conceptual clarity is unbeaten, no, no textbook can match it. So, keep going back to NCRT textbooks again and again and again, right. I will show another slide like the this year uh, analysis. So, where uh, most of the economy polity questions could be traced back to NCRTs, right. So, but again NCRT would have mentioned it, the topic is there. If it what I mean by digging deeper is that learning more about those topics which are there in the NCRT because of your curiosity, right. So, that should be there. So, the last 25 years uh, questions you know I just wanted to show samples to you. I am sure you have already done this last 25 years preliminary question papers. Hmm. Say you know ancient medieval India. So, in last 25 years there were questions on Indus Valley civilization in 7 years out of last 25 years right on Vedas 5 years, Gupta period, it is the most important topic Gupta and Mughals, right. So, there were 10 years questions on Gupta period, right out of 25 years. So, in different different years. So, I think we have mentioned the years also. For example, Gupta starting from 95, uh, on literature there were two questions on in 95 and 2013, on numismatics 97, sculpture 96, science 96. So, latest 2019 on you know polity no 2020 important places society 2019. So, there have been questions in last 10 years out of 25 years on Gupta and Mughals I think is the favorite topic 15 years out of 25 years. So, now in the ancient medieval you should know that studying more about Gupta and Mughals, digging deeper on Gupta and Mughals is more rewarding than trying to take a bulky book on art and culture on ancient medieval and trying to read the entire textbook, right. Do little bit extra reading on Gupta period, Mughals that is more rewarding. Start with the NCRT, every word, every keyword that is there in NCRT on Gupta period and on Mughals literally remember every stuff and slightly read more than that you know you take a word from NCRT if there is a keyword extrapolate it any related concept any related keywords any related personalities events related to that keyword as part of the history. So, if you can learn from the standard textbooks right. So, that is important and before you go into solving I mean uh, reading these NCRT textbooks it is 
compulsory imperative non negotiable to do 25 years of questions first right so if you have started preliminary examination preparation take a question bank which has 25 years of question papers right spend at least one month 25 to 30 days every day 100 questions means 25 days 100 questions solving just solve them like you know like 2 hours and then analyze 5 to 6 hours and i'll i'll bet i'll bet you doing this for next 25 days is the most crucial part of your entire preliminary preparation you will learn so many important topics you will learn so many patterns right which can lead to better elimination in the this year preliminary examination paper right and after doing these then you can go to ncert textbooks then you will know that okay in that year there was a question on this particular topic acha this was there in ncert you will will go on you know getting those surprised kind of moment you know wow it was it is there in ncert it was asked that year something like this so last year i didn't get answer to this question again it is there in ncs ncert this revelation you know you will go on getting the gnanodaya moment you know nirvana moment what is that buddha huh? so vijayanagar 3 years and then when it comes to art and culture buddhism right invest your time on buddhism and jainism learn as much as on buddhism if there is one question you will get one question right if there are three questions one or two you will get definitely right right so buddhism and jainism are favorite topics in the art and culture now you don't have to get threatened by art and culture right so focus on these two topics if there are five questions on art and culture there is two to three questions are going to be on these so you can leave you know these art forms dance forms culture totally out know them just for your general knowledge sake but from preliminary examination point don't memorize you know all these there will be a question there can be a question you can leave it remembering it is very difficult you know there are so many dance forms like india is such a big diverse country everybody dances in india right so <laughs> So if you go to North Indian marriage, you know, with a without dance, the, there is no marriage. In South, it is <laughs> it's totally opposite. You know, in South India, when you go to marriage, it looks like hmm? shoka charane. <laughs> so on the dais, you know, these couple are standing, and everyone is eager to, you know, give them something and run to dinner, or lunch. So they are more eager to go to lunch, big rota dinner. So these two people doesn't matter to them. I mean, they don't care. <laughs> right and these people haven't slept for one or two night and they are eager to sleep right <laughs> no they are tired no so, so everybody is you know troubling them so everyone sitting here there is no music in some cases there will be music in most cases there won't be any kind of music and everyone will be you know have have seen this marriages in south they are so boring you know literally so boring so all the girls were dressed well they are busy in taking selfies and photos <laughs> and all the boys are waiting you know when to go to go back to their room and open the bottles right <laughs> so it's so like drama like nobody cares about these people actually so modern india you know these uh, all these acts which british left us the gifts of british so 16 years there were more questions on these you know 1935 act 1919 act morlemento reform this and that right <coughs> councils act memorize each and every one of them right highest written civil get so similarly the national movement in terms of personalities indian national movement you know important events and personalities and then important organizations you know create so many people created so many organizations all these freedom fighters like bhagat singh created many uh, dr b r ambedkar created many not as part of uh, freedom struggle but later also so similarly like motilal nehru like any significant personality they have all created their own right organizations so they have all played critical role in 
national struggle for freedom. So, read about them, right. So, Bipan Chandra is one resource or any like spectrum, I think it has a huge chapter on all these things, right. So, you do not have to read the entire book. So, try to get 60 percent of the questions right in each of the topics, right. I mean especially in these areas, polity economy you can name for 80 percent accuracy. Polity, economy and environment you can aim for 80 percent accuracy, but when it comes to art and culture, modern India, ancient, medieval. So, even if you can get 60 percent of them right. So, what I am trying to say is that in the modern India, you do not have to read the entire textbook, right. So, about important personalities, important organizations. So, all these important British enactments and some contributions of those governors and generals, right and social religious reform movement. So, that is the fourth uh, important topic here. So, within physical geography the climate and atmosphere right climatology part is the most favorite part in prelims the climatology part anything related to atmosphere you know and the climate and weather that has been the most important topic. So, physical geography again you do not have to read each and everything even the cyclones come in part of the climate and some questions on earthquake ok. So, then the next pet topic is oceanography right. So, earlier they used to ask the classical physical geography like you know the folds, faults. So, those kind of you know uh, landforms questions, but now mostly into this kind and there is also overlapping with environmental questions related to disasters, when it comes to questions on cyclones, earthquakes, landslides right. So, there is overlap between some geography question and environment questions. So, mapping is forever you know. So, there is equal weight is both political and physical. So, within Indian geography again you know the mapping uh, the reverse, reverse is most important part when it comes to Indian geography, the reverse. See la if you saw last 25 year questions, you will learn about each and every river in India, right, most of the important. So, on those rivers you do some kind of extra reading and map them, remember them, memorize them and I am just curious why people cannot draw India map properly, is it because India map is like that or? 90 percent of the people cannot draw Indian map properly. So, it looks like amoeba in some cases right and again when you draw like amoeba nobody gets you know hmm, enraged hmm, no case on you when it is drawn like amoeba, but a slight distortion in the north you know in those the, the holy part of Kashmir and if we post it as part of current affair magazine or no, one we get one or two mail threatening you know we will file a case on you. So, you have destroyed integrity of India, sovereignty of India right, you have depicted India wrongly right. So, of course, we should not do that the India map should be proper, but nobody complains when you people you know mutilate India. Hmm? How many of you can draw properly India map? I will ask you to come and draw it. Can you just draw and show? those who said yes, I just want to see, I mean this is not part of the session, but I am just curious. It takes one minute to draw like you know, those who draw really good Indian map, I will give 200 rupees here only. <laughs> hmm? You cannot draw. No pen paper. You can draw, you do not want 200 rupees. <laughs> hmm? Parva Villa, it is good. Sure? Nice, not bad. Now, yeah, this is good, decent. Sure? Hmm. Ah, good enough, this is very good. Good, no. Okay, okay. <laughs> no, it is. In, it looks like India, but 
no <laughs> yeah, that is decent <laughs> no So I think yours is the best. You draw it, draw it here. So I'm giving him 200 rupees. Thank you, sir. So this is the. It is good, right? Your name I forget. Session. Ah, uh, under. <laughs> Andaman recover missing. <laughs> what about Lakshadweep? Hmm? That is also missing. So, when a big city comes in Andaman recover, everyone will draw. Hmm? They are planning to create some big board, right? In an Andaman recover. Good. So, at, and most of the Indian maps again, they do not look like Indian maps, right? So, either uh, you know, the south is pregnant or <laughs> the north is stunted. I mean the, the northeast is stunted, malnourished, and the eastern part again fatty, Gujarat part, and then Kashmir again, you know, is constricted, you know, narrowed. So these are just sample. Okay, uh, within environment and ecology, these uh, acts and conventions. So all the acts related to environment, ecology, wildlife conservation. And uh, the conceptual question, basic concepts of all these, you know, food chain, food web, ecology, keystone species. So, the basic concepts. So, they are more important. The importance of national parks, protected areas is kind of, you know, over exaggerated in this examination. So, the acts and conventions are more important than them. But do not ignore any part in the environment. So, my suggestion, right. So, try to read each and every part in environment, in economy and polity. So, do not leave out any of the topics, any of the chapters here. So, the returns are very high here, right, because most of the questions are conceptual. If the concepts are strong in every part of the syllabus, you can easily get them right. So, what it requires is uh, the repeated practice, repeated revision. So, that reinforcement of same concept again and again is more important and application of that concept through multiple of number of questions, multiple number of mock tests. So, this is one area people keep it reserved for last two months. So, in the month of March, April, I will do more number of mock tests. So, till then I will prepare. So, this is a wrong strategy. So, from today onwards, from this moment onwards, make it a simultaneous affair. Solve questions, read, solve questions. It should be like solving questions in the morning, reading about it, again solving questions on the same topic, right. So, first you solve a question, then you know you have activated your neurons and mind, right, brain. When you read, it is more of a active reading. So, every part you will be trying to link with what you have solved in the morning, right. After that, in the evening, again when you solve more number of questions. So, both what you have solved in the morning, afternoon what you have read, you can apply really well in the evening, right. The accuracy will be very high when you do this. So, over a period of time, when you do it for 5 to 6 days repeatedly and I bet you give a full length mark on that particular topic, right, there will be 80 percent accuracy if you have covered maximum number of topics in this way. But you, you people have a different strategy like read book morning to night, once in a week or later after that trying to give more number of questions or you may be doing like some 20, 30 questions now and then in between, but it is a random affair, it is not structured. And so, one is UPSC 25 years question papers, that is your primary source. The second most important source is that other examinations conducted by UPSC, UPSC. So, other exams like you know CDS, NDA, Indian uh, engineering service, it has prelims and then geoscientist examination, right. 
CAPF examination. So, I choose uh, this particular geoscientist paper 22 preliminary paper. So, this is a secret I am revealing in this session for you right. So, for you because you are attempting this att attending this particular session. So, the secret is that hmm? <laughs> everyone is eager like you know if I tell so, treat it as a secret ok I mean so, do not say ah, we knew it. Huh? <laughs> So, most of your environment and science and equations right can be traced back to engineering service and geoscientist examination the questions that are there in these exam prelims examinations environment and SNT not question as it is, but the topics right. If you select all the topics of last 5 years geoscientist engineering service of course, some in CDS and NDA it is just the varying degree. So, there they might be a diluted form of the question in UPSC its standard can be little bit enhanced. So, in these uh, questions where you know specifically about geology and all the standard may be slightly higher also right. So, for example, uh, you know so these are all straightforward questions, but they are related to some concepts you might miss in your day to day reading. So, which one of the following statement is correct about uh, virus. So, these are simple questions of course. So, there is there are one or two history questions. So, the conceptual question the term biotope refers to. So, which one of the following result due to the edge effect between cold and warm ocean waters? Which one is correct about marshes. See what I am talking about is not the question here about the topics. The topic marshes is important right. So, there is a conceptual question like you know where is it? So, these are all very simple questions, but what matters is the topics. So, what is uh, a juvenile ecosystem is characterized by ok. So, like 20 sample questions. Now, what I have why I have put them is because of the topics. So, do not look at the question. So, they are meant for not for you people brilliant minds right. Now, no, note down the topics from all these examinations right. So, go through 5 years of these questions if there is a topic like marshes if there is a topic like juvenile ecosystem whatever it is it might look a simple concept. Now, understand for UPSC civil services the basics are the most important the stronger the stronger is your basics easily you can score 60 percent right. So, 60 percent of the questions can be solved only through having strong basics. So, geoscientist exam engineering like science and tech questions I have seen the uh, engineering service preliminary. So, they are standard questions and then NDA, CDS, CAPF. So, all these environment and uh, SNT questions from these examinations of course, other questions are important, but you already have a big repository in 25 years. So, these questions are more contemporary right more than question I repeat the topics. So, on those topics if you have already read well and good, but dig deeper. So, when I say dig deeper try to learn more about those particular topics right. So, now regarding current affairs now how do you prepare for current affairs for preliminary examination what is your source for current affairs? Hmm? monthly compilation yearly compilation it can be insights or vision IAs, but anyway you are reading these compilations right. Most of you are dependent on these compilations hmm? yes or no apart from that any other source current affair quiz good. So, how many of you are doing current affair quiz uh, consistently regularly 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 good. So, what about others you, you do not know about its existence hmm? the current affair quiz 
do you know that uh, we post 20 questions every day 20 current affair questions every day on our website are you aware of it hmm? okay you don't have time to solve them right so 20 questions every day means nearly 500 questions in a month 500 questions on current affairs in a month and then 12 months is equal to 6000 questions 6000 questions on current affairs alone 6000 questions right so among them uh, we post questions from editorials there is an initiative called as qued q u e d questions from editorials so we go through few editorials of that day any topic that is covered in the editorial on that topic we frame statement based questions so they are not direct question they are statement based questions so if you have uh, every month five questions like that you know you have around 100 questions like that 70 to 80 questions like that so there are so many questions from editorial these are mostly analytical questions which the exam is moving towards right very important there is something called rtm revision through mcqs so every day 10 questions based on the previous day current affairs so my suggestion for current affair preparation for preliminary examination your primary material should be these quiz compilations right forget even our own current affair monthly compilations weekly compilations you can put them aside first go through these quiz compilations nobody can cover hundreds like thousands of issues more effectively than this way through quiz so first you will solve a question then you will activate your brain and then read the current affair right and our description is bit detailed you know as it is in the current affairs so if it is not detailed again you can go back to reference but it is mostly detailed in for so for most of the questions so read these uh, compilations i mean solve these questions and read these compilations you can have target of every day again 50 questions in the beginning right if you do 50 questions uh, it will take like 3 4 months but again you will have to increase to 100 questions right and you will see most of the questions are repetitive and the topics right current affair is a continuous affair right so there is a russia ukraine war and there will be a russia ukraine war in another decade or another century so it's a continuous affair so anything related to russia is related to oil war and you know cold war fight and other things so it will keep on going so you may ignore some questions which are repetitive so the idea is you will be covering current affair questions more current affair more effectively through this if you solve even 5000 questions so in the examination so how many current affairs questions will be there 20 30 40 so there is a overlapping between you know environment economy some questions look like current affair they may be part of the economy right so they may be part of the polity or environment so purely current affairs something related to sports or personalities some kind of wars happening here and there may be around 20 25 questions right now 25 out of 6000 questions right so what is the percentage hmm? 25 out of 6000 hmm? some point two five. how much or 2 point CSAT that is why I tell you do CSAT, CSAT hmm? hmm? 0.4 0.4 which one is correct call some someone call UPSC hmm? to get the authentic key here hmm? 0.4 or 0.04 use your mobile no? ok mobile is allowed here in the center okay point 0.4 fine so so out of 6000 questions don't you think there is a point 0.4 percent probability that you are going to get all 20 questions right hmm? point 0.4 i am not talking about what i believe is it is more than 10 percent probability right so this is a more effective way of solving current affair question again this is why I have so much trust in this I would not be 
it's not marketing or anything. I wouldn't be recommending this if I hadn't got the feedback from previous year toppers. When many came for felicitation, one unanimous thanksgiving, you know, was with respect to our quiz initiative. Those who are regular with quiz initiative have the highest probability of scoring, highest marks in current affairs section, right. So, you have plenty of time now, you, so you do not, so that is why I have taken this, I mean, session now only, so not in the month of March, right. So, you still have 108 days, hmm? 108 ambulance number, hmm? <laughs> so emergency number 108, hmm? it is not emergency. So, you have uh, 108 days, 108 is also have some significance on so this number, some religious significance, Sri 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 108, some, hmm? Jain, what is the significance? Hmm? Hmm? Okay. Mm -hmm. So, you are saying Jain Muni's name starts from 108 something like that. I, I am not sure about it. Hmm? Okay, I mean forget it. It is like extra curiosity, you know. <laughs> so, 108 days you have. Uh, and uh, I think uh, to solve uh, 6000 questions, uh, 60 days is enough, 60 days is enough and then another uh, 40 days you can give it for revision. So, now what you need to do the going forward the strategy should be next 50, 60 days. So, divide your time between slightly between current affairs like say like 30 percent of your time for current affairs and then remaining time between CSAT and other remaining static topics. So, day divided into three parts. So, maybe like depending on where you stand, if you have been doing quiz regularly, maybe 20 percent of your time for current affairs, remaining time for, so 30 percent time for CSAT. So, do not compromise with this. So, out of 10 hours, give 3 hours for CSAT and within CSAT, my suggestion get good at quant part, right. The quant, the mathematic part. So, try to solve again questions from CDS, NDA, different examinations, different UPSC papers of CSAT nature and try to learn them, you know, those topics, solve more and more number of questions on them. Secondly, do not rely too much on the comprehension, right. So, definitely learn about it, but in the examination it is better to go with the quant, I mean gain expertise in that. So, try to get more accuracy out of 40 around questions. So, you must solve 30 plus accurately. So, then you are in the safer side, then you can go with another 10 20 CSAT question. So, in CSAT what problem I have uh, uh, listened you know came across is that is the time management. So, people those who go without practice are not able to solve more than 40 45 questions right. So, this year especially most of them are ending up with the 35 40 questions, they are not able to go beyond them like by actually solving them. So, in, in panic mode somebody would have attempted you know 5 10 more in the end. So, you do not consider them, but with actually by applying mind you know you that number of questions one is solving is getting reduced that is because of lack of practice. So, ideally it should be 50 plus right. So, if you can solve 50 plus questions in 2 hours with confidence. So, even if 35 are right around 40 are right you are easily going to sail through. So, as I said the CSAT is going to get tougher, it is better to practice more full length papers. So, daily practice coupled with more full length papers, when you solve a full length paper do not go into your comfort zone that solving comprehension, most of the test series comprehensions including ours will not meet the standard of UPSC right. So, it is difficult to match because you know they buy passages from the standard sources. So, Again, they have like expert minds, you know, we have people of our age setting the paper. So, they have people like, you know, 60, 70 year old brilliant minds, you know, creating passages and, you know, coming up with those kind of questions. So, try to rely more on the quant part and then give second preference to comprehension. So, they can play in the comprehension very much, you know, they can increase the length of the passage, they can make questions more vague and, you know, kill your time. So, you do not get scared about mathematics part. If it, if you want enroll to a class, if it, if you want and uh, there are n number of YouTube free videos for you to, you know, solve these questions, learn them, but definitely practice. So, remaining time as I said, question, reading, question, approach. 
So, you can divide your time you know like 5 to 10 days for a subject. So, go subject wise, so you can start with start with polity, right. So, polity then move to economy. So, then, then, then do geography, then move to environment and then S and T, science and tech. After that you can go with ancient to modern history or modern history to ancient. Keep them last, but first do polity, try to gain stronghold in economy, polity, economy, geography, environment, S and T. So, these five areas will get you 60 plus questions easily, right, if you have mastered this. Now, the more number of questions you should solve on a topic, because you will know more number of ways to eliminate a question, right. So, when you solve more number of questions like for example, Buddhism. So, questions has been asked like around 10 to 15 years. So, first you have so many options within these questions, you will learn around 50, 20 different topics, right. And in addition to that, do more number of other Buddhism related questions either from our static quiz or from our there is art and culture question bank also. So, when you do more of them, you will know more number of eliminating when you get one or two questions on Buddhism. So, that is the reason you need to do more number of questions on one particular topic. The more you do, the more you revise them, it is very easy to eliminate options. So, I believe it is somewhere stored in subconscious when you solve a problem, when you take a question, when you try to solve it and when you read the solution, it is stored more effectively than directly reading it, right. So, you might have experienced all of you, Lakshmi Kant even after reading three times, it looks like you do not know anything, right. So, you cannot easily recall stuff, it, it looks like you do not know anything. So, that is a wrong way of reading books. The effective education tool includes first questioning the things, right, first facing the questions, first developing the curious mindset curiosity arises only when you question, right. So, then exploring it, right. First ask a question, then seek answer, then you will remember better rather than directly going there and you know. So, it, it has totally destroyed people. So, even those with you know brilliant minds because of this wrong approach you have failed multiple times and it is a stress free approach what I am saying. So, it is a more fun way, more engaging way. So, do not look at your scores. So, do not try to get every question right you are not doing these daily questions to get most of them right, you are doing them to learn more, right. So, trigger more of your neurons, okay. So, by reading uh, more and more current affairs, what happens? Yesterday somebody put it nicely. So, that going forward what people do is that uh, they start reading more and more current affair materials. That will affect your ability to remember the basics, because you get carried away with all this so called you know current affair related facts and knowledge stuff. So, it will go on diluting your basic knowledge. So, it overpowers. Ideally going forward there should be more emphasis on basics as you inch towards the examination keep giving more and more time towards the basics, keep reading the basics. Out of fear do not read these bulky books, bulky compilations and other things, keep going back to basics. For example, read more and more NCRTs just before start from now, but again read just before examination. Just before examination like 10, 15 days before examination, keep solving only previous year question papers. Again the same topics, keep reading the same topics. And one compulsory exercise you must do is that take the 22 paper, right. Somebody know how to go to browser?
So this is the, uh, I don't know if you have read this article on our website. So we divided the paper into different topics like economy, uh, which questions are concept related and uh, what was the source of these questions. So we had just tabled, the, this, this is the analysis of the 22 paper. So there are questions on you know near, rear, inflation, rupee, dip. so all are conceptual mostly, right. Uh, IIB reals, sector, government borrowings, debt related, equity financing, monetary policy, capital flight, devaluation, bank boards, bureau convertible. So of course we have to read economic survey budget very carefully this year, all of you are aware of it. So what I am trying to convey here is that, again use this paper as template in addition to what I said knowing about last 25 year papers, go little bit deeper on this particular paper, again read these concepts, right. For example, rear near concept is there, so try to get conceptual clarity on that particular concept, again try to extrapolate that, right. So is there any extra dimension to that particular concept, was there a change made to this, right. Is it in use again for some reasons, right. Any related concept to these two concepts, right. So start with basic thing, you know, what do you mean by real, what do you mean by nominal. In most of the things we have real nom GDP, nominal GDP, real this and that, right. So start with the basics, understand them. Similarly, there is one institution, what is IIB? Industrial Infrastructure Bank or what? Huh? Inflation Index Bonds, huh? yes or no? Yeah, yeah, right. So, are there different bonds related to economy concept? So, do not, of course, you would have read it, but take this as your framework. From here, you grow your concepts again. So, that is what I am trying to say. So, read these concepts again. Any related concept to this, when you read IIB, what comes to your mind? When you are reading about IIB, within that paragraph, there may be another one or two keywords which might lead to another different concept, you are getting the point. So this is more important because there is another logic of mine to this particular. Now what happens when someone is setting the paper, UPSC preliminary examination paper, what I word is that there are various committees scattered throughout the India and they send different, different questions, nobody knows who is sending the questions. So they come to UPSC and they pick only few questions from each of these committees who have sent the paper. So there is absolutely no one will ever, for example, if you know that your uncle is part of the committee, because your uncle has told you I am part of the committee because some personal bonding with you, right. But he, they might have sent 50 questions to UPSC. It can be one question or it can be zero question that can be picked from that. There is absolutely no guarantee that you are going to know more than answer to one question. Right. So, 99 questions you do not know. So, your uncle should know another uncle from another committee. <laughs> that uncle should know another uncle from another committee and all should be directly related through blood. And there should not be any what? Mahabharata kind of stuff, you know, between Pandava, Kaurava type. There should be cordial. So, then only we will know 3 or 4 questions. <laughs> so, there is absolutely no way that you are going to no anything. So, there is no leakage of paper. So, unless you know the, the person who comes with the bundle here, you know, in, so they have 5 minute window between you know, opening and showing. So, if the invigilator is your auntie, so right. <laughs> and then she will go to jail, right. She cannot show it. So, it is totally against. So, that is why I said I have really huge respect for UPSC. There may be little subjectivity here and there. But the way this examination is conducted is truly level playing field in terms of, see we have to enhance your capabilities, skills. So do not, we should not keep complaining I am from Kannada medium, I am from you know, not so well good school or college. So this exam has provided equal syllabus everything, you have to enhance your capabilities. So there are, that is why we also exist, you know, to provide your guidance and tools. The coaching is necessary, right. I mean. <laughs> No, because there is uh, inequality in the society. If there is equality in the society, we do not exist, right. If everyone is sitting from his IIT, why, why, why do you need 
inside says you don't need there is inequality you you bring equality whole you know whole some development in the society we will move into another field like like animal husbandry or food processing right so so most 90% of the economic questions are conceptual and application based so and then this overlap between economy and current affairs economy and current affairs right so e commerce indirect transfers g20 within that there is economic angle imf so this is the question number you know i don't know which set set af set af paper so you can also go back take the question paper open this article you know how to open this article you go to any search engine search inside say yes 22 analysis so you will get multi billion dollar links in the beginning but don't click them click the inside say yes link right so you get their links in the first like billion dollar you hmm? the quality content always comes second you know okay so similarly polity you have uh, so they have put lakshmikant lakshmikant everywhere <laughs> now of course it's a good book it has every you read that book memorize you can easily solve out of out every question but it's a bulky book right so remembering it is impossible so first you be good in especially for philosophical questions in polity ncert are best right so questions on freedom liberty idea of you know justice these kind of questions so yeah so environment mostly you know conceptual questions yeah so basically you take for example you have uh, you know the question on gandhi kota canyon rivers in south pennar and uh, there is a monazite mineral right so basically from there you extrapolate and try to read more about more canyons that are there in india and around the world also right now what i was trying to say is that all these committees when they are framing the question papers they take this as the template my assumption this and the previous another one year now they are under a strict guidance that not a single question to be repeated from at least last 5 year papers not a single question as it is to be repeated for that they have to compulsorily study these papers if you don't want to repeat from this you should know these papers right? what is there in these right so they will be studying these papers while studying what happens so two ways they can frame the questions so there is a clear guidance that you know the question should be of the nature that touch the daily aspects of our lives right a candidate which have direct implication for the people every topic like most of that i don't say every topic most of the topic that are covered in upsc as part of different subjects somewhere related to our lives right whether it is economy or whether it is polity environment so they are not like not related so on them you should have clear deeper understanding they are not like random questions right so there is way there is kind of pattern from year to year that is one way another one is which are currently in the news both national international the kind of topics right frequently in the news so their focus will be on these two plus the previous year questions so while definitely while looking at these questions they do not want to repeat from this right but nothing is stopping to stopping them from extrapolating from year or taking hint from year for for some of the questions right so because the human mind you know you cannot randomly search if if i ask you to frame 100 questions right on indian polity what will you do hmm? so how will you frame 100 questions can you sit alone and you know go on hmm, writing constitution no right you don't put constitution in front of you and frame the questions some questions you might do so you will obviously put lakshmikant in front of you maybe i'm not saying they'll put lakshmikant in front of them i don't think they know that that book exists i think right so what they might do is that they will have the list of all the topics important in indian polity 
So again, why we recommend NCERT is NCERT has those kind of topics, all important topics meant for the examination. So I am not saying they will sit with the NCERT, but all the topics, the broader framework, right. So on those topics, they want to frame questions. So now they do not want to repeat because they keep looking at this, right. Even then at least from 25 years, there are one or two questions which get repeated as it is. There is a trend, last 5, 6 years, at least one question as it is, is repeated from 25 year papers. So mostly in the ancient medieval modernistic questions, right. So they take clue from these papers because these topics are still very important, right. And they just go to another related concept or extrapolate it to next level and ask the question. So that is why you always have, you know, question on Buddhism. There is a continuing trend, you know, you take Buddhism from another year, you have another question on Buddhism. There is a continuous trend on Jainism, on reverse, it is important, on uh, important, you know, climate related events, they are always important. So like that, if you can narrow down your preparation, understand important topics and gain deeper understanding, scoring 120 plus in preliminary GS paper is cakewalk. It is very easy, right. So it is it's, it's very easy actually. You just have to be smart in the way you are preparing. If you leave out syllabus, if you leave out pre previous year question papers, if you leave out NCRT and reading anything, then you are making a big mistake. These three are the fundamental part of your day to day preparation. So keep them with you, keep re re revisiting them again and again. Anything that is there in these books, in these question papers is of utmost important. Start from 22 paper. From this onwards go back, right. So any topics that are there in 22, 21, 20 papers are even more important than the, the older topics. They are more contemporary. They are again more continuous. They have more impact on our lives, right. So just understand. So within SNT you will see that the questions are of mostly related to pollution, mostly related to, you know, emerging technologies which have implication for our lives, which are going to change, impact our society profoundly in coming years. It is not a random question on something, you know, in SNT. You go through SNT question, you will see a trend that they have direct implication for our lives. They can ask anything in SNT, right? They can ask any random question, but they do not do that. So understand this and you will be sailing through preliminary examination, right? So as soon as the preliminary examination gets over, within three days, we will do mains session and then I hope all of you will again attend with better India maps, hmm? right? Because in mains, uh, you should definitely draw at least two diagrams in every geography answer. And most history, art and culture question also require you to draw India map, right? So I believe uh, the one who draws better India map will have at least five marks advantage, right? So it is the psychology, right? a better handwriting, a very good, beautiful handwriting also has a clear impact on the people, right. It makes evaluator feel good, you know, proud. I have got a copy, you know. There is a stereotype, you know, if the handwriting is beautiful, somebody has written India map nicely, it is from a beautiful girl. <laughs> I mean, stereotype I am talking, I am not saying it, it is a stereotype. The girls are like, you know, angry here. Hmm? No. So, any doubts? Hmm? Why some of you are so serious? Hmm? Like Joker in that movie, you know, Dark Knight. Hmm? Have you seen the movie Dark Knight? Hmm? You know the Joker part? Joker character? He keeps asking why so serious. He is not serious. I watch lots of movies. Hmm? I watch Patan also. <laughs> yeah, I watch Patan. It's good. Good action movie for kids. Hmm? Hmm? Films can be anything, any center, wherever it is convenient for you. So it can be Bangalore, it can be any center. For films? The center should be good, you know, no creaking benches with 
proper fan, you get the feedback. You know, usually film centers are the same centers, the same schools and colleges, right? A city which has you know nearby restaurant for you to go in the afternoon and have. So most of them are very bad. <laughs> film centers. So you can go to Mysore. You can go to your hometown is Chennai, which Vishakhapatnam. Go to Vishakhapatnam. So maybe uh, 10 days before, 15 days before prelims you can go. So do last minute revision and there you can write. Bhubaneswar, not Vijay Vada, like Bhubaneswar or Katak maybe. Hmm? No, no doubts. I think all are now Talil Ula Bittanga center bagya, main center. So yeah, this is my duty. I know it is uh, uh, kind of uh, what? I shouldn't be, I shouldn't have said this in the public also. So live stream YouTube. If somebody from UPSC is watching this fellow is you know into something. Hmm? Nothing like you know uh, what we uh, learn from that trend we have to tell. I have put it more objectively. I am not putting it more conclusively that you go Bangalore is a poor center, nothing like that, but based on a common sense, right. So the sample size is less, the people who are writing mains in Bangalore less, within them so many of them are well prepared, right. So I think you cannot give more number of uh, ranks to one particular center, right. So then there will be another conspiracy theory. Mm. Insights got papers and you know, so it was applied to its students and students wrote better means, mm. nothing like that. So what happened in 2016, we got very good result, you know, in 2016. So in between 14 to 16, this answer rating madness was non-existent anywhere in India. So it, it was me who started in Bangalore and it slowly spread across rest of the country. So this daily answer writing, you know, so many mains test, core batch kind of thing. So those who wrote so many tests here between 14 to, you know, 16 got handsome rank including rank 1 and other things. And then what happened, it started spreading into all the cities. But Bangalore remained a strong center for, you know, people writing good mains, good answers. So over the year what happened, uh, the results started decreasing in Bangalore. Because more and more number of people became better in answer rating, right? So out of 600 people who are writing in the mains. So I think uh, the only logical explanation, because I have seen the best of the people failing mains in, in Bangalore center. And I am sure the same, I do not see any reason for them to fail here. There is no explanation. And when you see their marks, it is equally distributed. It is not like they have scored extremely less in one paper, right? It is not like that slightly above average in across all the papers. If there is fault with their optional, we could blame optional or you know essay paper, right. Hmm? So you think about it. So this is for people in Bangalore, I am not talking about other centers in anywhere in India. So those who are listening, if you are living in Lucknow, write in Lucknow. If you are living in Mumbai, write in Mumbai, right. So this is for only people who are writing in Bangalore, within them as I said earlier, those who have done really good amount of practice. You, if you think like you are capable of clearing mains, right, you can clear mains from any center, so go to different center. All right, hmm? done. So, wish you all the best. Thank you so much. So, class admin are a doubt here, buddy. I am running now. Right. Any doubt you ask now? Somebody has the doubts. <coughs>